I think anyone that remembers the name Mighty Max probably knows it more from the collectible playset toys Mattel made back in 92. Mike did a whole review on them. But in 93, the animated series came out. If I had to give an example of a series that originally started off from a toy line and has a complete story from the 90s, I would pick Mighty Max. The thanks goes to Mark Zaslov and Robert Hudnut. The names are probably not familiar, but if you grew up in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, you've seen work from them. DuckTales, Tailspin, Superhuman Samurai, Cyber Squad, and Shaolin Showdown. But what can you make from a toy line that features a kid in a red baseball cap? The toy line had Max in different types of settings and storylines. That's how the baseball cap became the focal point. To explain how Max jumped into so many different situations from the toys was to give Max the power to teleport to different times and places, even alien worlds for a few episodes. Out of all the type of hero stories, my favorite one goes to the regular person, where they're thrown into insane life and death problems and see how they deal. Don't get me wrong, I like shows that do He-Man, born and raised to fight the evil taking over the land, but I think characters that are ordinary people, kids or adults, the struggle, the learning to become a hero is a more satisfying journey. I, I mean, what if I say the wrong thing or, or if I lead us into a trap? You must do this. It is prophecy. So Max, what's his story? He's a young, smart kid, has a little mouth on him. He loves to crack jokes, very sarcastic. Don't mess with me, buddy. Uh, I know the ancient deadly art of, um, uh, voodoo. It's his way in dealing with himself being lonely. Most of the time he's home alone with his mother busy nonstop at her job. She's an archeologist who works at the local museum when Max gets this weird statue that has hieroglyphics. They translate into the famous line, You have been chosen to be the cap bearer? Max gets scared and drops the statue. This is where the special red baseball cap falls at. Max's cap is a magical item that is designed for the chosen one, a part of a prophecy told 3,000 years ago. It only looks like a cap to fit the current chosen one. What is the cap? What does it do? It's a very powerful device that chooses the user, allowing them to access portals. These portals lead you to all kinds of places around the world, even the astral plane. The only thing it can do is open a portal wherever you are. You must know the location of the portals, and some of these are gonna be in the air or underwater. I'm the mighty one, you remember? I just saved the world from certain destruction. I ain't moving, find a closer portal. Many monsters over the thousands of years have tried to gain the power of the cap, the biggest one called Skullmaster. He's the main villain that's been sealed away after his battle between the previous cap bearer. When Max put on the cap, it activated the power signal allowing Skullmaster to sense the cap. Mighty Max, in a nutshell, is basically a 90s version of Ben 10. Don't touch that crystal, huh? You were saying? No! Mighty Max is a really strong mix of comedy and action drama, which is the best part of the series. Zaslav would always have the show be funny first. Uh, no chance we have the wrong address, huh? But when it became time to be serious, he went all the way in. You can't save the world! I can die trying! You will! Just like how DuckTales and Tailspin have fun adventure episodes, but when something big happened, like the golden goose turning the entire planet to gold, it hit an emotional high. That's why the Mighty Max producers chose a high quality voice cast. All of them can cover the extreme range of the series needed. Rob Polston, who's played tons of classic cartoon voices like Raph and TMNT, Ditto and Ben 10, Steel Beak and Darkwing Duck, Yakko and Pinky played Max. It does feel weird at first. Polston really can't hide him sounding older than a 12 year old. Man, I don't think they made this one in Taiwan. Tim Curry voicing Skullmaster and Frank Welker voicing the second villain, Lava Lord, along with Tony Jay and Richard Mall playing Virgil and Norman, Max's friend and mentor. This mom voiced by Tress McNeil. You got half of the Animaniacs cast. I think the show's in good hands. One of the more surprising things is Tony Jay. I've usually seen him play very serious roles like Megabyte and Reboot and the Grim Reaper in Darkwing Duck, for example. Mighty Max is the first time I can remember him playing a goofy character. Hey, Virg! How come you can't fly? I learned to read instead. Virgil's a cross between Yoda and Marvin from Hitchhiker's Guide. 
He has the great knowledge of the past and future. He's the one who helps guide Max and the one who sent him the cap and the pilot. Norman, now he's mostly the silent bodyguard. Think Ronan Dex from Stargate. This is gonna be fun. He was chosen by Virgil as the best protector for him and the chosen one. The writers do take their time to expand on both in backstory down the series. Virgil, while he looks like a chicken, he's not an alien. He's actually the last surviving Lemurian, the people who originally guarded the power of the Cap. His people were killed off along with Atlantis by Skullmaster during his attempt at stealing its power. This is why Virgil's cold and distant to others. It could also be why the Cap chose Max as the bearer. The show doesn't give lots of detail, but one thing that's always come up. Every person has a gift, and in their gift lies their destiny. I can see the Cap wanting to help Virgil. I mean, after 3,000 years of wandering the planet and probably being paranoid, I'd suck at talking or trusting people. Even Norman, the stiffest of the stiffs, can't stand Virgil. What's Norman's story, you ask? He's been through crap himself, from his father's death and journey to becoming the greatest warrior in his place, not to mention gained immortality. He's the guy where folk wars were based on. Hercules, Thor, they were all him. Unlike Virgil, Norman loves Max's sarcastic nature. It gives him a big laugh that Virgil gets annoyed at him in every episode. So throughout the whole series, they're on the run from stopping Skullmaster from escaping the center of the Earth and getting the cap while also dealing with crazy other monsters. Snakes, spiders, Norman hates spiders, cyclops, and sorcerers. If it had a playset, it was in the show. Another key one being Lava Lord, who also wants the camp's power. What's cooking? You, you've returned. As well as Max dealing with alien threats or getting stuck in the past. The coolest thing the show did was Max didn't hide this from his friends and mom. I mean, you really can't when your house has a secret basement that holds a portal that directly connects to Skullmaster's lair. Whenever Max's mom could, she talked Virgil's ear off. He's the only surviving person that's lived in ancient Egypt's time and she's just as hyper as Max. Max, you know you're too young to drive. Okay, I hate to pull rank, but I am the mighty one. I mean, doesn't that count for something? No. His other two friends, B and Felix, they're his classmates and help out every now and again. Norman and Virgil's backstory gets explored through several episodes as well as a strong season one finale where, where Max teams up with other heroes from novels and history like Beowulf and Hanuman. The seven of them were able to destroy Skullmaster's Crystal of Skulls, but at the cost of the other heroes. This is where the problems the show starts to gain. Remember how I said that King Arthur's second season was screwed up possibly because of the whole video game and kids programming violence complaints back in 93? Well, Mighty Max was a target because you know, kid shelves can have stakes and emotional moments. Like the play sets, Mighty Max was not shy in showing things. Death, weapons, mostly off camera and with monsters, but they were there. Threats, falling into lava, all that kind of stuff. As well as Skullmaster. Tim Curry was allowed to actually be evil evil. I bring me his meat. And I'll eat it raw. The show was half horror. So of course, Paris complained. Blood happens, death happens. Max paid respect to the heroes that helped him stop Skullmaster. It, is kids going to funerals wrong? Episode 2 had Max and the guys get stuck on an alien spaceship ready to kill everyone on Earth. While they were inside, the ship had a conveyor belt moving around brains. It's creepy, but how is it any worse than you going to a Halloween party? The stories were great because they didn't shy away from tense situations. You can't escape. I'll rip your limbs from your body and slowly suck the marrow from your body. Oh. I never got scared. Max, Norman, and Virgil's lives were threatened in every single episode. You cared about them more because you saw them risk their lives to save their friends or Max's mom or B. Good to see you again, Mr. Skullmaster. <laughs> Scully. I bet the episode's called Bring Me the Head of Mighty Max and Blood of the Dragon pissed off parents. Because of the writers caring about the quality of the show, Max got a unique ending. Max has been running from Skullmaster for two years. Both Virgil and Norman were killed in the two-part finale. Goodbye, old friend. Virgil! Where 
Max had to stop Skullmaster on his own. Skullmaster's whole point in getting the cab was to control time and take over the planet. It allowed Max to manipulate time at the last moment where everything got reset, bringing him back to the very first episode, giving everyone a second chance at stopping Skullmaster. They got their memories, so they know how to get rid of him. And this time, don't take quite so long! <laughs> what I enjoyed out of the series is that it used everything from a random toy line and gave it purpose. Each of the main characters got an arc, even through the basic nature of the series, as well as Max's mom being a part of the journey. You know how many times a kid would get special powers and they had to hide it, or the parents would never be brought up or completely ignored? I'm looking at you, Ben and Sam. And it's one of the few Bobat series that has a complete ending. It's sad that the series is not available anywhere today. It wasn't popular when it came out, but I think that was more thanks to the parents being overprotected the kids at the time. If you're a fan of the voice cast, the show even got a few big names. Ron Perlman, Brad Garrett, and Kate Mulgrew played a few villains on the series. Squash the mortal. He is of no use to us now. Yes, he is. If you can find it, check it out. Thanks for checking out the review. Subscribe if you want to see more. And if you remember a movie or a show that's long been forgotten, good or bad, leave it as a suggestion below. I'm always on a lookout for obscured stuff.